morning folks um a few weeks ago my friend alice asked what was happening in the garden and i was going to take some photos and stuff to show her and i thought oh i might just do a little walk through and um show alice and anyone else who's interested what's happening in the garden at the moment so um just walking through the door here we've got rhubarb going really crazy and this is one of my favorite favorite plants it's um it's borage and it's a wonderful um plant for bees i'm just trying to capture some here that it's absolutely covered in bees at the moment oh there we go one just flew past <laughs> um yeah, so borage is a great medicinal plant, but um, as I said, the bees go absolutely gaga for it, and it's a really beautiful flower as well. The flowers are um, the flowers are edible, and they're lovely in salads and on, in drinks and things like that. But yeah, so as you can see, there are a lot of bees on the borage, and down here, if we go. Just sort of under the borage a little bit we've got some beautiful purple whoop, beautiful purple beans we've got parsley and we've got zucchini if you look closely in there some little ones growing i picked some a few days ago so um yeah, we don't have a lot at the moment. And down here, if you just have a look, this is um, some broccoli for winter. It's a bean on the end there. Um, you'll notice that um, throughout the garden, I mix things up a lot. So I don't plant a lot of things in... Um, perfect rows and you know it's not an insta worthy kind of garden um the reason for that is i like to go by um some permaculture principles and part of that is kind of growing things together so they create their own little ecosystem and it also helps reduce pests um they don't tend to target as much, especially if, like me, you're trying to grow um, plants and food without pesticides and without inter as much, you know, intervention as possible. So yeah. So I'm just going to come across here to the next bed. You also notice that there's a lot of flowers here. Um, Basically, when you plant a garden, you're planting a garden for the bees as much as anything else. So we've got some nice little strawberries there. Lots of parsley. Little strawberries hiding in there. And this bed has more broccoli. So the winter crops are already in. And that's where you'll see lots of sort of dense crops which are the ones that are sort of around at the moment and then spaces where the new stuff's being put in so it's taking advantage of the warmth that we have at the moment which we haven't had much of it which i'll talk about a bit later um, these are our beautiful scarlet runner beans amazing and they're such such a pretty flower it's gorgeous and we've got so many beans off this plant it's just one plant and we're just constantly picking them and they just are not giving up which is brilliant another big rhubarb here and this big lot of um, greenery is sorrel parsley that's beetroot right in there and I'll be picking some of that pretty soon, actually. You'll also notice that quite a few things are going to seed. These are a beautiful um, French heirloom lettuce called Michelle. And 
I'm letting it go to seed so that I can obviously grow more of them from the seeds. Um, so at the moment the leaves I won't eat because they'll, they're quite bitter once they go to seed. So yeah. So lots and lots of things. That's why the garden looks untidy at the moment because there's a lot of things going to seed. Um, blueberries there. Um, the blueberries are finished now. They've just finished. We've got so many blueberries this year, which has just been brilliant. Um, and the secret to blueberries is, if you look in here, these are pine needles as mulch. Um, blueberries like a acidic environment, and the pine needles make the soil a little, little bit more acidic. So, yeah. Over here... This is a really interesting plant. This is um, valerian. So it's basically the Valium of the um, herbal plant world. Um, a really useful plant. Great for, you know, if you can't sleep, if you, if you get anxious. I don't get anxious very much anymore <laughs> since moving down here. But um, it's a brilliant plant. Got lots of zucchinis there just coming through. And again, lots of flowers. It's really important to have plenty of flowers. Speaking of which, if we look up here, sunflowers. We've got sunflowers everywhere if you look around at the moment. And again, I'm letting a lot of those um, basically go to seed on the plant and we'll save the seeds. We can eat the seeds. The chooks can eat the seeds, but we can also plant more tomorrow, oh, tomorrow, <laughs> next year. <laughs> we just go to the next bed. This is a beautiful plant. This is um, Angelica. Very old-fashioned plant. Um, in the ye olde days, they used to um, actually candy this, and it was used in cakes and things. But again, it's also a really amazing medicinal plant, so I'm growing that. We've got eggplant here, which is just coming. Um, zucchinis. We've got some bigger ones in here. The season's been really late for everything this year. This time last year, I'd already picked, you know, there were um, zucchinis and, and tomatoes and things like that were really already um, being picked. This year, they've only just started. Although I do have, if you look around here, got cucumber. And down here, these are bok choy and choy sum that have just sprouted. Um, these are really great to grow in containers. Um, they're a really quick crop. These came up in like four days after sowing, so quite amazing really. And um, you get a lot out of them for very little effort, which is great. The onions, little baby cos lettuces there, water for the birds. Birds are important. Um, they look after a lot of the pests. Um, strawberries, really fabulous to grow in, um, in hanging baskets up away out of the, um, out of the way of bugs, most bugs. But, um, We've had so many. I have other strawberries, which you'll see in a moment throughout the garden. But yeah, they've just been non-stop. As much as we can pick them, they just keep growing. We've got another beautiful scarlet runner. I'll have to pick these soon, actually. I've come down here with my coffee and my basket and my secateurs <laughs> this morning to pick some stuff for today. Over here... So these are the tomatoes, and as you can see, not a lot of ripe ones. If you have a look, uh, where are we? Let's have a look under here. We've got them there. I've got about four different varieties. I had a bit of a disaster with tomatoes much earlier in the season. I um, was growing a heap in the greenhouse seedlings from seed and unfortunately we had a really hot day 
the greenhouse got really hot and burnt the lot. So I had to go and buy seedlings, which I didn't want to do. However, you've got to adapt. So that's the tomatoes. But they are on the way. They are on the way and we will be eating them. If you just have a look down here, a few are starting to look a little bit ripe. There we go. Yeah. But it's lovely. And as we know, there's nothing like a homegrown tomato. So just here, that's my little spot where I sit. Morning coffee. The lavender's just finishing. So in a few weeks' time, I'll be cutting the lavender right back to the ground. Um, and then it will basically just resurface um, in the spring. It just gives it a chance to sort of consolidate. If you have a look. Yeah, the bees love, love, love the lavender. There you go. And we come to one of the staples of the garden, which we grow all year round. Um, these are really young ones, but we've got rainbow shard. We have spinach. We eat a lot of spinach. It's one of our favourite things to eat. And if you have a look, um, so you get the odd hole from things eating it, but mostly it's fine. And it's not the end of the world to eat spinach, people, with a bit of a couple of holes on them. As long as you just give everything a wash, it's all fine. We've got some little scallopini, yellow scallopini squash on the way here. And if you notice, I've got some little seedlings of cos lettuce there. And again, you, um, you'll notice that I just mix everything up and it's a really good thing to do. It really, really does help reduce pests. I've got some lettuce here in this hanging basket. Again, really new seedlings are just getting started. Lots more strawberries. I'm gonna pick these for breakfast today, actually. So enjoy the pictures of them while you can because they're gonna be in my belly very soon. Again, pretty zinnias. Bees love these too. I've got some young beans here, very young plants. Pretty purple sage. This is an interesting plant. This is um, a native Tasmanian edible alpine mint. The leaves actually look a little bit like thyme, but it's actually it's got this beautiful aromatic minty flavour, rather lovely. More strawberries, more spinach. One of my other favourite, absolute favourite plants, Echinacea. I've got this spotted around the garden as well. Fabulous plant for every reason. It looks beautiful, the bees love it. It's good for you. What more do you want? And another one of my faves, Yarrow. Again, beautiful medicinal plant. So useful. And again, <laughs> as you can see, the bees love it. Just gorgeous. Lots of parsley. Again, parsley is everywhere. I eat a lot of parsley. And some little miniature eggplants, which have only just got started. But if you have a look here, there's actually... Whoop, it's just coming along. It's just losing its little cover there. But yeah. It's the first time I'm growing eggplant and um, eggplant and capsicum out of the greenhouse. It's kind of hasn't been super, super um, successful because we have not had very much warm weather and that's been really problematic. Oh, look at this. Oh, there was a bee inside the nasturtium flower just then. But yeah. Here, some more winter crops just getting started. This is celery. And I've got it um, in other spots in the garden as well. You don't put all your eggs in one basket, spread it around a bit. So if something gets attacked, it's not all going to go. Zinnias. And this absolutely beautiful 
red vein sorrel, which is such a good looking plant. It's beautiful. Capsicums, as you can see, they have not had a good time. Um, they have been attacked quite a lot. But, you know, you win some, you lose some, you move on. <laughs> My little herb patch. Some pretty little violas there. I'll cut this more sunflowers. Sunflowers, sunflowers everywhere. And those heads up there you can see that have started to dry out. And they will be next year's sunflowers. And also we'll eat some because there's heaps. Absolutely heaps. Very nice. More echinacea. These are seedlings of little Japanese white turnips. So delicious. Eat them raw. They're like the size of a radish. And um, they're absolutely delicious. Some beautiful rainbow shard there. More lavender. Sunflowers. And then we're kind of back to the beginning. We're back to the borage and the bees. So yeah, so this is my little patch. We actually have five acres of land, but um, one of the problems of living so close to nature here is that everything will want to eat your food, which is fair enough, really. If you think, you know, everything's trying to survive. Hence, everything has to be covered or out of reach of all the critters. And that's fine. But there's he heaps of space here um, for us just to grow what we need. Um, just moving here so yeah so that's my little my little patch and there you go the gate so that the critters can't get in I can lock them out so yeah there we go so I hope you've enjoyed this little Tour. I'm going to go and drink my coffee in the garden and pick some food for us to eat today. I'm liking the look of those strawberries. I'll pick some zucchini and some beans and um, yeah. So Alice, I hope that that satisfies you. <laughs> I hope you can see what's happening in the garden. And um, maybe when the winter crops start, I'll, um, I'll come and do another one. You can sort of see what's happening. But it's always, always um, in, in flux. There's no such thing as the perfect garden where everything's, um, you know, perfect at the same time. When you have a productive garden, that's just not how it works. And I kind of dig that. And I like that we're growing stuff without chemicals. And yeah, it's a really exciting thing to see your food growing before your eyes. It's beautiful. Have a good day, everyone. And um, I'll give you another report maybe in a couple of months' time, a month or so. <laughs> you can see, as I'm filming, there are just bees flying in front of the screen, <laughs> which is awesome. Okay, guys. Lots of love from Forest Raven Farm. Bye.